And you're a friend of Chris Slough. Uh, Charlie Slough. Charlie Slough. Charlie Slough. Charlie Slough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me and Charlie go back years. Like, he's head of security. Shout out to Harry. I won't be up your real name, but I'll see you boys out there doing your thing. Hopefully you can see me. And in the future, we can get something going. But yeah, me and Charlie Slough go back years, man. I've got so many stories with Charlie, man. And does he really speak like that? Because I've seen him, the DJ. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's doing an impersonation while he's speaking. He's like... He's like, um, that was sick, man. Oh my God, guys. Oh my God. This tune's sick. This guy's the thing. <laughs> like, that's Charlie Sloth. A lot of people don't get that energy. It's almost like a Camden energy. A lot of us Camden boys were good guys. But, you know, like when you're in a negative space, you can't necessarily be a good guy in five. So you've got to kind of, you know, you've got to kind of like not be yourself in that world, which is messed up. So what was your story about your teeth getting smashed off? Oh. <laughs> My God. So <clears throat> I'm in prisons. Like, what was I arrested for? Me and my co D was arrested for armed robberies. Was on a flying, was on an obo observation from a flying squad. They had us because they knew what we was up to. And um, yeah, so we'd been arrested for conspiracy to supply, no, conspiracy to rob that was, and um, a cash van. And so we were in prison at the time. And I'm the same. I'm not going to prison to be good. And I'm not going to prison to get along with officers. I'm not going to prison to make friends. I'm going there to do my time. I'm going there to get big. I'm going there to just and get out again, you know, and just do the same thing over and over again. That's what's on my mind. So I'm, I sell drugs in prison. I fight officers in prison. I fight other inmates. I rob inmates. Whatever it is, I do. Because I'm not changing just because I've gone to prison, you know. But you're a changed man now from that. Of course yeah, I am. Yeah, but yeah. but but, but this to, is just to make it clear yeah, for the yeah, viewers. This is, this is the mindset of how I was back then. Yeah, yeah. So when I'm in these systems and I'm around, okay, there, there's certain ways you can do your prison sentence. The nice way or the hard way. For me, I always used to do it the hard way. I never knew, but it was just how I was. So anyway, I used to sell drugs in prison, um, heroin, weed, all that type of stuff. And um, you'd get canteen on the weekend. So... Waiting for the canteen to come. I was in High Point at the time. They used to call it Knife Point because um, it was a very, very, yeah, 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 it was a rough prison, man. A lot of people got stabbed up in that in there. And um, so I'm waiting for my canteen, but I can hear like walking on the landing. And I'm like, doesn't sound like the canteen walk to me. You know, you'd like when, you, when you're in prison, you hear the kids, you have like a You know familiar, all the noises. Yeah, you have all, all the noises. And I'm like, yeah, this doesn't sound good. So anyway, I'm hearing more and more footsteps. They come outside my cell and they're like, look, Mr. Lazar, uh, you need to come down with us. And I'm like, for what? Anyway, they wanted to kick me out of prison for drug culture because when you're selling drugs, they need to keep other prisoners safe and you could be using violence to just get your debts paid or whatever. So, or, um, or get your debts paid to you. So because of that, they kicked me out of the prison. There was a group of us. We all got kicked out of the prison. And um, I still had drugs on me at the time. But And I'm still going to be the same person. I know people in most prisons in England, yeah? Um, most of my friends are still in prison. Yeah, that's the sad thing. And um, <clears throat> so they've shipped, they've kept me in the block for six weeks. I was in there for six weeks on GOAD. They call it Good Order and Discipline, where they just... You don't have a release date from the block that you're just down there until they can either kick you out of prison or they feel that you're good enough to return to normal population. But there's six of us, maybe seven. Anyway, they separated us all and they shipped us out to all different prisons. Now, I got told I was going to Maidstone. They're like, Maidstone's the best, Chow. You can cook there. It's good. You've got all types of stuff going on. I was happy to be there. You know, I'm like, fuck my I'm going to Maidstone. It's good. So I get to Maidstone. It's a shithole. It's the worst job I've ever been to. Everyone uh, just don't believe prisoners, people, because they don't mostly even know themselves. You know, they're mostly hearing it third hand. I get there. It's like an old, victorious, gloomiest, dingy. Even the prisoners look more violent in there. I'm like, okay, this is definitely something new. <laughs> So I get into Maidstone now and I'm still trying to do the same thing. I'm trying to get a phone. I'm trying to sell drugs. I'm trying to just do me whatever it takes to just make this sentence and make me just whatever, you know? Crazy, crazy point of view. <clears throat> so I'm going around to all the people. Remember, nobody knows me in this prison. I've come to a prison and if you don't know me from anywhere, you see a tall guy with glasses, bald head, you may think like, I don't really know this guy. This guy doesn't look like anything much, but like I've got a bad temper on me. I'm I'm a bit of you know. I was just it was a bit weird. So, but anyway, so I'd got I'd, I'd find out who had the drugs. I'd find out everything, and um, so uh, I had my drugs uh, from the last prison, but I bought a bit extra because I need a canteen. And in prison, you can get canteen once a week, and once a week is like 
you know, to buy all your shower gels, your phone credit. Sometimes you don't have enough money. You know what it's like, innit? It's just, it's just hard to get all your stuff in. So I used to sell drugs to get other bits of canteen. And um, that was my plan in the new prison in Maidstone. So um, I'll buy a heroin because I can hustle that, yeah? But I'll go to buy the heroin off the person and um, he sells me it. Now, remember, I'm new to the prison. I don't know anyone. So he's, I'm an easy target to get robbed. I'm not, I'm not associated with anyone. I don't know anybody. So uh, I'm trying to get to a better wing now. So I'm like, where's the wing for the gym? And like, I'm a gym person. When I go to jail, as long as I can get gym and and weed I'm, and a mobile phone, I'm fine. And um, um, I go to the wing where there's gym. <laughs> I get there, like everyone's got muscles. Obviously, it's big. Like everyone's got muscles. No one likes me. I just stick out like a sore thumb. Okay, cool, whatever. I'll get into it. I know what prison's like sometimes. It just, it makes, you know, it makes it difficult. Now, in Maidstone, you're on the ground floor, which is um, the ones landing. And um, you have to be on there. There's no TVs on the ones landing. Um, and you have to pass a drug test to get up on the threes and the fours. Now, I had no weed at the time. I'd been in the block for ages, so I didn't have anything like that. So I'd pass the drug test. And I was selling we um um like heroin to like the other prisoners. And um one prisoner had a phone. So I got the phone off him, give him like, I don't know, a bit of heroin. And now I'm selling heroin for phone credits and canteen. But now I'm the new guy. And like this new guy has got a phone, he's got drugs, he's got loads of canteen coming. Yep. He's tall, looks like a nerd. We're gonna get him. Uh -oh. <laughs> We're gonna get him. <laughs> so anyway, they they sent me to go up to the fours. I'm mean, like, honestly, man, it was like the top corner in the bloody top landing in the corner cell. There was hardly any lighting. It was just, it just felt like a bloody bad situation. So I go up there with my bag. You know, you get your plastic bag with all your belongings. I go up there, put my stuff down. <sighs> Within ten minutes, the door clicked over, and like you can close prison cell doors or you can just click them over. So like they just um. Don't shut, but they'll like you can't open it from the from the inside. Unless like you grab like something can try and pull it. And so I heard the door click and I turn around and there's three big black guys. No, I'm lying. There's two big black guys in my cell, yeah? Muslim guys, yeah. But mu converted in jail to Muslim. Like they're it's like a gang in there. Anyway. So um like, give us the phone, give us the heroin. B they called it. And I'm trying to play it off innocent, like. Nah. Like, what do you mean? No, 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 no. I haven't got anything. I, I'm a good talker. I can talk my way out of this situation. You know, I can hustle my way out of this situation. One of the guys, remember, these guys are big, big. Everyone's big in this jail, yeah? Um, Because I'm on the gym wing. He's got his hand in his tracksuit bottom pocket. I'm like, nah, 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 I think I can talk my way out of it. These guys did not want to hear anything your boy had to say. <laughs> he just had hot pepper sauce in Kona bottle. He just swung it. Vroom! Oh. Full pelt. And like, I've been hit with like a, like I say, machete, other tools, stabbed and all that kind of stuff. And it's almost like, a taste and a flash of light when something real bad happens to you, but you can't register it. Well, that's what I get anyway. It's like a flash of light and a taste, a metallic taste in my mouth. I got that. I knew something was terribly wrong. That was the start of it. They started beating me in the cell, but I'm big as well. So I'm wrestling with them now. Yeah. And obviously they're just getting in on me. Like they're just really getting in on your boy. So now I'm trying to open the door. I'm thinking, you know what? As long as they don't stab me, I can take all the punches and everything. They're trying to pull me back in. I'm trying to pull the door. And it's so hard because it's literally a gap within a millimeter that I've got to pull. So I'm pulling it, pulling it, pulling it. For some reason, there's resistance. There's bloody resistance. I'm pulling it, pulling it. Finally open. There's about 10 crackers trying to keep the door closed. And I'm like, oh my God. My, <laughs> like I've got blood pissing out of my mouth. My teeth are not gone, but they're shattered. Like you'd shatter glass. And so my teeth are just shattered. There's nerve endings hanging out. Like, <sighs> like, like, like my head's all scarred up from the back where they were smashing <sighs> me. And this is over. Like on in jail, the heroin was mostly worth like 300 quid. The phone worth 200 quid. Out and out here in the real world, the phone was worth twenty pound. It was like a ten pound, maybe twenty pound bit of heroin. So I nearly got attacked. I could have died in prison for the smallest amount of of, of drugs and a dead phone. You know, <laughs> that was that was a hard time for me because you got to remember, people, if you're a criminal and you live that life, then there's certain rules you got to stand by. And when you're in prison now, like people know, like if you're gonna grass or this, that, the other. So you gotta take your licks. And I had a phone that time. That was my saving grace. So I managed to call my mum. I'm like, mum, I've been attacked. They're, they're, they're saying I've got to give names, um, or then or, 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 or I've got to stay in the prison. So I got my mum to call up the prison and um just just go hard. You know, my mum, she's such a good woman. She always helps um helps me out when I'm in a bad position, you know? And she got onto them and she moved me out of that prison. I got to Cold and Leaf from there. 
But yeah, I hated Maidstone, Bob. I hated Maidstone. <laughs> and, it was, and it was sold to yeah. you as like this yeah, luxurious. No, 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 you're good. You're going to go there, cook your own food. And that was another thing. Like they, everyone had big knives and that where you can cook your own food. There's all knives. People got hot oil. I'm like, I'm in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely not again.